Hi everyone, today I'll be reviewing the vegan diet. This is my first video in a new series where I take a deep dive into the most up-to-date evidence behind today's most popular diets, including the vegan diet, carnivore diet, ketogenic diet, and more. Now I'm making this series because there's so much conflicting and often misleading information circulating on social media about diets, Many health influencers promote a single diet as a cure-all, often without substantial human evidence to back their claims. And if they do provide their audience with evidence due to pre-existing confirmation bias, they tend to highlight only the studies that support their perspective and ignore those that don't. On top of that, many health influencers don't have the training to be able to differentiate between high quality research from poor quality data. As a physician, I've been trained to critically evaluate clinical research uh, and clinical literature, and that was one of my favorite things to do during training. So all of that being said, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the evidence, the benefits, and the risks surrounding the vegan diet. I'm going to conclude the video with my own personal opinion based on the clinical evidence, as well as my own experience with the vegan diet. So what is the vegan diet? The vegan diet entails avoiding all animal products. This includes dairy, eggs, and meat. There are two major kinds of vegans. Those who eat ultra-processed packaged vegan food. This is not real food. It, it offers very minimal nutritional value oftentimes. This is obviously not a healthy option. Now, the other type of vegan is the one who sticks to a whole food plant-based diet that consists of eating a lot of fruits, vegetables, seeds, legumes, nuts, and whole grains. This is the type of veganism that I will be referring to. Now, before we delve into the data, I want to note that I'll be focusing mainly on findings from systematic reviews and meta-analyses. These are considered the highest quality evidence in clinical research because they pull results from multiple studies, which increases the statistical power. And these help us draw more reliable conclusions about whatever hypothesis we have. Now let's get into the data. A number of meta-analyses and systematic reviews that pooled human randomized clinical trials studying the vegan diet have found that vegan diets do offer significant health benefits, but they also come with some major nutritional risks. Let's start with the benefits. The vegan diet has been found to be effective for weight reduction. In a meta-analysis comparing the vegan diet to other diets, the vegans had the lowest BMI of all the diet groups and a lower risk of becoming obese. Because obesity is a risk factor for diabetes, vegans also have a lower risk for developing diabetes because they have a lower risk of becoming obese. The diet also improves glycemic control and decreases risk of insulin resistance. The vegan diet is also associated with decreased risk for cardiovascular disease. It's associated with improved cholesterol markers, including total cholesterol, LDL, and ApoB levels. The vegan diet is associated with a lower risk of cancer. Vegans are less likely to have vitamin C deficiency due to their high intake of fruits and vegetables that are high in vitamin C. This is important because our bodies do not store vitamin C, so we have to regularly consume it to prevent vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C is a potent antioxidant, although overt vitamin C deficiency remains relatively uncommon in developed countries, there is growing concern that suboptimal vitamin C intake may be on the rise. This may be due to increased reliance on ultra-processed foods, as well as the growing popularity of restrictive diets such as the carnivore and the ketogenic diet, which often limit or exclude foods that are rich in vitamin C. People following these diets may not meet their daily vitamin C needs. Over time, even mild deficiencies in vitamin C can impair immune function, collagen synthesis, and antioxidant defense. Vegans also had a lower risk of magnesium deficiency. Vegans are less likely to have magnesium deficiency due to their high intake of fruits and vegetables that are high in magnesium. About half the U.S. population consumes less than the recommended daily amount of magnesium. Magnesium is needed for more than 300 biochemical reactions in the body. It helps to maintain normal nerve and muscle function, supports a healthy immune system, keeps the heartbeat steady, helps bones remain strong, supports healthy blood glucose levels, and aids in the production of energy. 
vegans consume more polyunsaturated fatty acids compared to other diets. Polyunsaturated fats cannot be synthesized by the body and need to be obtained from food. Omega-3 fatty acids are one of the major polyunsaturated fats that are important for the body. Omega-3 fatty acids are strongly associated with reducing inflammation, reducing atherosclerosis, reducing oxidative stress. The three major types of omega-3 fatty acids include ALA, DHA and EPA. ALA is primarily found in plant sources like flaxseed, chia seeds, and walnuts, while EPA and DHA are more prevalent in fish and other seafood. So vegans consume much more ALA than DHA and EPA. Now the body does not efficiently convert ALA to DHA. So vegans are at risk for DHA deficiency if they don't properly plan their diets. DHA deficiency symptoms include dry skin and hair, brittle nails, joint pain, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and depression. It's also important to note that the consumption of DHA is incredibly important for ensuring optimal cognitive functioning, uh, mitigating neuroinflammation, and promoting neuroprotection. A vegan can mitigate this risk for DHA deficiency by consuming omega-3 supplements that are made from algae and certain seaweeds. Some people have concerns that vegans do not get enough protein. However, According to the data, most vegans actually do meet the recommended daily protein intake. Vegans consume more fiber than any other diet because of all the fruits and veggies they consume. Although there are health influencers who minimize the importance of fiber and assert that the body does not need it, there are documented benefits to fiber. Fiber leads to increased bowel movements and lower bowel transit time compared to other diets like the carnivore diet or ketogenic diet. This lower transit time may account for improved gut health and may even be a reason why diets high in fiber lead to decreased cancer risk. This makes sense intuitively. If food and any toxins within the food that you eat stay in the gut for a shorter period of time because the fiber gets them out more quickly, the less time they have to be absorbed by the gut. Fiber also plays a role in blood sugar control and protects against insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Some people may struggle with high fiber intake because it can result in more frequent and intense bowel movements, and it can be linked to a worsening of irritable bowel syndrome symptoms in some people. For those people whose guts are highly sensitive and who are interested still in increasing their fiber intake, Something called low FODMAP, high fiber foods, might be a good idea. These foods are often better tolerated by individuals with IBS because they are lower in fermentable carbohydrates. Now, fermentable carbohydrates are what can cause the gas and bloating associated with eating high fiber foods. Despite its advantages, a vegan diet can predispose individuals to nutrient deficiencies if the diet is not properly planned. Many of these deficiencies develop gradually and silently, which is likely why many people feel great initially on a vegan diet, but down the line may experience a variety of insidious symptoms, including cognitive decline, anemia, muscle wasting, and bone fractures. Vegans have a 30% higher rate of bone fractures compared to omnivores. This is because they are at a higher risk of calcium deficiency due to low calcium intake. Not only due to the exclusion of animal-based products that are high in calcium, but also due to decreased bioavailability in calcium in plant-based foods. Vegan individuals could improve their calcium status by consuming more broccoli, sprouts, tofu, fortified plant milks, as well as fortified mineral waters. Vegans tend to have lower serum concentration levels of essential amino acids. Now, essential amino acids are the nine amino acids that the body cannot produce on its own and that must be obtained from food. Inadequate intake of essential amino acids can result in muscle wasting, which is called sarcopenia. This is especially important uh, for aging individuals. It's Sarcopenia is associated with increased morbidity and mortality because it causes frailty. This is one of the major things that we want to prevent in aging individuals because that helps prevent bone fractures and falls and all the bad things that are associated with morbidity or mortality as someone ages. Most plant foods don't provide all nine essential amino acids in adequate amounts. However, proper dietary planning by eating complementary proteins 
can ameliorate the potential for essential amino acid deficiency. Complementary pairing of proteins means pairing foods with different amino acid profiles to ensure that you have sufficient intake of all amino acids. B12 deficiency is a major risk with vegans because of the exclusion of vitamin B12 rich foods such as meat, poultry, and eggs. Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause a variety of neurological disorders, including memory problems and spinal cord damage, as well as blood disorders such as anemia. It's also important to note that symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency often manifest slowly after several years, so it may be difficult for a person to identify. They may just start exhibiting symptoms like nonspecific brain fog or fatigue or mood issues. So it would be very wise for vegans to regularly monitor their vitamin B12 levels. The goal is to aim for between a level of 400 and 700. Although the normal range for B12 is typically about 200 in a typical lab value, most neurologists, including myself, consider anything below about 400 still low, especially if a patient has nonspecific symptoms related to B12 deficiencies, such as fatigue or neurological complaints, such as numbness, tingling, brain fog, or mood changes. It's important for vegans to supplement with B12, either through supplements or B12 fortified foods. Vegans are at risk for selenium deficiency. Selenium plays a key role in thyroid function, immune system function, and it also acts as an antioxidant. Reproduction disorders and muscle weakness have also been reported in cases of low selenium levels. Zinc intake can also be reduced among vegans. Meat, dairy, and eggs are zinc-rich foods, whereas some plant foods that do contain zinc, like nuts, seeds, and whole grains, present bioavailability issues due to the presence of phytic acid acid or phytate. Phytic acid lowers the absorption of several nutrients, including zinc, in the intestine. Phytic acid content can be reduced by soaking or fermenting whatever food you are about to eat. It's also important to note that if someone does supplement with zinc, that they stick with the recommended daily intake levels because excessive zinc consumption can actually lead to deficiency of another nutrient, copper. Let's talk about iodine. Studies have found that iodine intake is lower among vegans. Vegans can mitigate this by consuming seaweed as well as using iodized salt. Let's talk about iron. Historically, it's been thought that vegans are at risk for iron deficiency. This is because the iron found in plant foods called non-heme iron is less bioavailable compared to iron called heme iron in animal products. Bioavailability means the ability of the gut to absorb a certain nutrient. The phytic acid found in plants also decreases the absorption of iron even more. However, the evidence does not point to increased iron deficiency in vegans. Studies and reviews have shown that although vegans tend to have lower ferritin levels, which Ferritin is a marker of iron stores. They do not have a higher incidence of iron deficiency anemia, especially when the diet is well-planned. Also, vitamin C increases the absorption of iron. So eating iron-rich foods in combination with vitamin C-rich foods can help optimize iron absorption. So what is my overall consensus on the vegan diet? The vegan diet definitely has significant strengths, largely due to the high fruit and vegetable intake. That said, the vegan diet also carries nutritional risks if it's not carefully planned. Fortunately, with thoughtful supplementation and dietary planning, these deficiencies are largely preventable. However, those without the time, the energy, or the interest in managing these details, a strict vegan diet may not be ideal. While I strongly believe in the power of fruits and vegetables, not only for their nutrient density, but also for benefits we may not fully understand yet, I don't believe that someone needs to be vegan in order to benefit from high fruit and vegetable intake. In my opinion, a balanced omnivorous approach can offer the best of both worlds. High intake of plant foods, along with moderate amounts of ethically sourced animal products to more easily meet nutritional requirements. On a personal note, I used to follow a more ketogenic diet in the past, and I actually ended up finding myself getting sick quite frequently. I thought about why I got so sick on this diet, and I did realize that I didn't really consume a lot of fruits on this diet. 
And so I potentially was not consuming enough vitamin C, which may have impaired my immune function. Um, and because vitamin C is not stored in the body, you have to consume it regularly to prevent vitamin C deficiency. I dramatically increased my fruit and vegetable intake over the past year, and I have noticed a dramatic improvement in my immune function. I have gotten sick very, very rarely, despite having a preschooler who brings home every bug imaginable. At one point over the past year, I did try a vegan diet for about a month, and shortly afterward, I developed a stress fracture in my foot. Now, it's unlikely that such a short-term dietary change alone caused this fracture. Um, I was also doing a lot of long-distance running at the time. I had been under significant chronic stress from parenting and, you know, just lifing. Uh, so both that heavy endurance training and chronic stress uh, could have contributed to elevated cortisol levels, which we know can impair calcium absorption and contribute to bone loss over time. So if my calcium intake dropped during that period when I was vegan, even if it was brief, it may have tipped the balance and could have potentially contributed to my bone fracture. At this time, I am an omnivore. I do eat less meat than I used to several years ago, partly due to ethical concerns and then partly because I don't need a large quantity of meat to, or eggs to meet my nutritional uh, needs. My meat intake primarily consists of sardines, eggs, wild-caught salmon, and ethically sourced beef. And I eat this a couple, two to three times a week. I find that moderate meat consumption supports my health and it just simplifies getting the nutrients that I need without having to like plan so much or supplement. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables like I mentioned. That is my current diet right now and I feel really healthy and well balanced. Um, overall, I think being a vegan is associated with a lot of health benefits. And uh, if you can, if you have the energy, the time to properly supplement, uh, to mitigate all those potential deficiencies, then all the power to you. Just make sure you plan and check your labs regularly. Get a DEXA scan. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, stay tuned for my next video where I'll be reviewing the ketogenic and the carnivore diets. See you next time.